kill it. Hey gang, as you can see I've got a pumpkin shirt on which is great because we're looking at the great pumpkin or it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown which was the second um, peanut special that uh, was produced. The first was the following year or the previous year where they did uh, the Christmas special probably their most popular in beloved. Uh, it was a plot was based on a uh, comic strip story arc that had uh, happened a few years previously excuse me and uh, it deals with of course Linus confusing Santa Claus with Halloween and the great pumpkin are you writing to Linus? This is the time of year to write to the Great Pumpkin. On Halloween night, the Great Pumpkin rises out of his pumpkin patch and flies through the air with his bag of toys for all the children. Of course, nobody believes him. And, of course, as we uh, always look forward to, Snoopy makes a great entrance. They've done it. They've upset Lucy. Not again. Writing a letter to a stupid pumpkin? You make me the laughing stock of the neighborhood. All they talk about is my little brother who always writes to the great pumpkin. You better cut it out right now or I'll pound you. Well, enough of that. We've got to get to a historic moment. This is the first time Charlie Brown and Lucy's football gag was animated. This time you can trust me. See, here's a signed document testifying that I promise not to pull it away. It is signed. Ah! Peculiar thing about this document, it was never notarized. Well, that night everybody meets up to go trick-or-treating together and we get a look at their costumes oh good grief is that you patty no where is charlie brown here i am i had a little trouble with the scissors what in the world kind of costume is that he's a world war one flying ace now I've heard everything. All right, everybody, we'll go trick-or-treating, and then over to Vilas for the big Halloween party. Yeah! Before going trick-or-treating, they head over to the pumpkin patch where Linus is waiting patiently. See if he wants to go trick-or-treating. He doesn't. But he does convince Sally to stay with him and wait for the great pumpkin. And then we get the saddest trick-or-treating montage ever. I got five pieces of candy. I got a chocolate bar. I got a quarter. I got a rock. Gee, I got a candy bar. Boy, I got three cookies. Hey, I got a package of gum. I got a rock. I got a popcorn ball. I got a fudge bar. I got a pack of gum. I got a rock. Poor Charlie Brown. You know, the first time this aired, back in 66, children the next day sent candy 
to Charlie Brown because they felt so sad that he only got rocks. Isn't that a great story? That's a great anecdote. I like that. Well, uh, then we move on to our World War I flying ace in his Sopwith Camel slash doghouse where he's off on another adventure to face the Red Baron. Well, while the World War I flying ace is now making his way across enemy lines to get back through no man's land and make it to the Allies, the gang has finished trick-or-treating and after stopping by the pumpkin patch again to see if uh, Sally and Linus want to come to Violet's party and are turned down, we go to Violet's party where it turns out Charlie Brown is very necessary. Charlie Brown, you'll have to model for us. Me? Want me to model? Sure, Charlie Brown, you'll be the perfect model. If we shape the eyes like this, and the nose like this, and the mouth like this, Yes, that's the way. Poor Charlie Brown. I, I always sympathized with him. I was kind of bullied a lot at school, too, so he was sort of a kindred spirit for me. Anyway, Snoopy shows up at the party, and Schroeder plays a medley of World War I songs on his piano that Snoopy dances and reacts to before heading back off on his journey. Meanwhile, a little later at the pumpkin patch, something is stirring. I hear the great pumpkin! There he is! There he is! It's the great pumpkin! He's rising up out of the pumpkin patch! Linus may have passed out, but uh, Sally had a bit of a different reaction. I was robbed! I spent the whole night waiting for the great pumpkin when I could have been out for tricks or treats! Halloween is over and I missed it! You blockhead! You know who also had a bad reaction to this? Ray Bradbury and his daughter. Uh, story goes, after uh, seeing that the Great Pumpkin did not show, his daughter kicked the TV, and Bradbury was inspired to write the Halloween tree as a more spooky kid story about the history of Halloween. But uh, Linus has a very uh, pragmatic way of looking at this disappointment. Fury and a woman scorned, haven't you? Yes, I guess I have. Well, that's nothing compared to the fury of a woman who has been cheated out of tricks or treats. Truer words, my friends. Truer words. Well, everybody else goes home and Linus stays in the pumpkin patch. He knows the great pumpkin's coming. Eventually, Lucy goes and gets him and brings him back to bed and the next morning he and Charlie Brown are talking and Charlie Brown kind of says the wrong thing. 
And the great pumpkin never showed up? Nope. Well, don't take it too hard, Linus. I've done a lot of stupid things in my life, too. Stupid? What do you mean, stupid? Just wait till next year, Charlie Brown. And as the credits roll, Linus goes on a diatribe about next year he'll find the right pumpkin patch. And you'll all see. You'll all see. <laughs> Oh, this, this, I loved looking forward to this special every year. I just, I loved it. It was so good. It, it ran every year from about uh, 66 to 2019, at which point uh, it uh, moved exclusively over to Apple TV Plus the following year. Anyway. But yeah, I, it is so much good humor. If you're a fan of Peanuts, you know all the jokes. Uh, interestingly enough, um, all but the actress who played Lucy returned from the Christmas special to this one. And you, you can't really tell much of a difference. They, they both sounded very similar. And uh, great anecdote. Uh, in the middle of recording all the uh, voices um, they got a call from the actress's mother she had a tooth that was coming loose and not wanting to take a chance that it would fall out before they could finish recording all her lines and she suddenly developed a lisp they rushed her into the studio in like a marathon session of getting all her lines done and just as she spoke her last line, tooth popped out. <laughs> it's better be lucky than smart, they say. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it, it, I loved all the stuff with Snoopy. His the, the fantasy of you seeing the behind the enemy lines and um, you can uh, he comes upon a uh, sign giving three destinations actually accurate to pair to uh, France in those days and uh, when Schroeder is playing the uh, the medley uh, the World War one songs Snoopy, I mean, he, his reactions when he plays the sad, when Snoopy's crying, ah, and then, you know, and when there's one uh, about smiling, he smiles three times because it's smile, smile, smile. <laughs> and that's why we love Snoopy. Uh, to have that kind of imagination. That's why he's everyone's hero. Everybody loves him. Well, there's not too much more to say about this one. Uh, most people have all probably seen it. And, uh, yeah, it's a personal favorite. Of, probably my favorite of all the uh, specials. Although the Thanksgiving one, where Snoopy and Woodstock make jelly beans, pretzels, toast, and popcorn for Thanksgiving when Peppermint Patty invites everybody over to Chuck's house. Another winner. Well, uh, please hit like, share, and subscribe, and stay after the credits for my favorite scene.